Hello everybody, um, today we have the 3rd of November uh, 2020 and uh, we are here in Darmstadt near Frankfurt in Germany and uh, today for us it's a very important day. We had uh, the first interview um, with a, um, a media station here in Germany, the ARD, um, at, uh, in the late or early afternoon and um, we live streamed that to the, to the internet and um, because it's um, the kickoff uh, live stream session or it was the, the kickoff live stream session um, we uh, asked Dolores and um, Fiona to come here urgently to, to Germany they flew in from London today because we are all here because we want to fight um, the, the mask issue, um, the mask harms more than it uh, uh, um, benefits. benefits. So we worked on that um, as a firefighting group, let's put it like this, uh, for the last five weeks uh, on, on a very intensive um, uh, way. So now for us it's the final days uh, where we try to get um, uh, yeah, the, the final results done, um, not only in Germany, but worldwide. And uh, uh, Dolores, Fiona and Martin, who is with us uh, from Ireland, uh, we met in uh, Sweden and Stockholm on the weekend. Um, and um, I think we wrapped something up what we did in, on, on the weekend. Uh, Dolores uh, will, will do that. And uh, this session is just to make sure that um, we have a short introduction of ourselves. Me, I'm an engineer. I cared about my staff um, in the nuclear power business, for example. Um, we developed a test stands for the automotive and uh, pharmaceutical in industry. And we are busy with um, a test stand that um, can simulate ha potential harmness through f of, of the, the mask. So, I, I, I'm very proud uh, and um, pleased that uh, Dolores is here. She will take uh, over now and um, I'm happy that we are here all together today. Very good. Uh, great. Thank you very much. So my name is Professor Dolores Cahal. I'm a molecular biologist and immunologist. Uh, and for the last six months I have been speaking out in Ireland and around the world that there was no need to declare the pandemic on the 11th of March 2020 because there was only 1% of the annual flu deaths caused by a coronavirus at the end of the flu season and there are preventions and treatments available. Uh, so I gave an interview in May 2020 and asked for people around the world, including lawyers, scientists and doctors to contact me. Uh, and we joined up uh, in about three months ago with ISOFIA so we now regularly, people from 35 countries were meeting and we also formed the World Doctors Alliance. And then we all came to Berlin to meet Dr. Heiko Schöning on the 10th of October 2020. And at that meeting in Berlin, we decided to set up the uh, World Freedom Alliance. And we set that up this weekend uh, in Stockholm. And this was over 35 countries were represented and we decided that we would unite doctors, scientists, lawyers, and innovators, and people who maybe want to stand for election uh, around the world, so that we can look at whether there is evidence behind these lockdowns and evidence for the masks and social distancing. And we strongly believe there isn't. And so we will be landscape mapping the court cases for things like the PCR tests, the masks, the proportionality of the lockdowns and helping worldwide legal cases such as Canada, in America, in Germany, in Ireland and in Australia. So the World Freedom Alliance will have pillars or committees around the medical scientific element, the legal cases supporting them and also to find solutions for a better world, a more wonderful world, including in innovation and banking and supporting a really hard look at the democratic process, including uh, supporting political parties where ordinary people will stand, so that the next generation of politicians can be held accountable and they can't just be bringing in rules that cause more harm than good. So I'd just like to hand over now to uh, Barrister Martin Byrne in Ireland. Good evening, everybody, and uh, greetings from Ireland. It's a pleasure and an honour to be here 
My name is Martin Byrne. I'm a, a lawyer from Ireland and I'm legal counsel for the World Freedom Alliance and World Doctors Alliance. I'm also an advocate for human rights, so it gives me a great pleasure to speak to you, to have this opportunity to speak uh, for something that's very, very important for not just uh, people of my country, but the people for every country in Europe and indeed worldwide, because these issues that we're confronting right now affect everyone. And my attention was drawn to this matter back at the beginning of the year when I, I started to become aware of tremendous amount of censorship on social media. So that immediately sparked my attention and as a human rights lawyer, um, I realized that any restriction on the right, on, on the freedom of expression is a violation of that fundamental right. And what many people don't realize or understand, and it's very important that they do understand, is that the right to freedom of expression includes the right to in, impart or give out information and a right to receive. And this is guaranteed and protected under Article 10 of the European Convention on Human Rights. So we have, as a people, we have a right to receive information as well, not just a, a right to express information. So that got my attention. And if governments or media, or big tech or big data giants are, are restricting the citizens' right to receive information, that's a breach of, of one of our fundamental rights. And as any lawyer will know or tell you, uh, freedom of expression is one of the cornerstones of a democracy. I also became aware of a, a former Supreme Court judge in England called Lord Jonathan Sumption. He's highly regarded and respected and considered to be one of the finest legal minds alive today. And when I heard Lord Sumption uh, speak uh, back in, at the end of March of this year of a slide, into, a hysterical slide into a police state, that really got my attention. Because as we lawyers know, judges tend to use very measured language. So when you hear a former Supreme Court justice using terms like that, people ought to pay attention. So uh, many of you may have heard Lord Jonathan Sumption speaking about these things. And he said in a recent uh, lecture for Cambridge University, quote, the British public has not even begun to understand the seriousness of what is happening to our country. Many, perhaps most of them, don't care and won't care until it's too late. I believe the same also applies to a high degree in every Western democracy. And all around the world, people are wakening up to the fact that they are being stripped of their freedoms. And moreover, they are sensing that something just doesn't add up with this crisis. People need to understand that when you boil it down to its essence, our fundamental rights are not given to us by our government. Those fundamental rights and freedoms that we enjoy at the moment, or that we're supposed to be able to enjoy, are given to us by the very fact that we are born. They, they inhere in us. They are human attributes. They're given to us. If you believe in God, they're, they're given to us by God or, or, or our creator or by nature. They're not given to us by, by the uh, governments. And in every country that has a constitution, that constitution represents a code of conduct for our government to follow. And every government has an obligation to follow that code and to uphold and protect and defend and vindicate the fundamental rights and freedoms of the citizens. So as Benjamin Franklin once said, freedom is not a gift bestowed upon us by other men, but it is a right that belongs to us by the laws of God and nature. So it's up to us to stand up for our constitutional rights and, uh, for example, the right to freedom of expression, the right to bodily integrity and so on. And since I'm speaking to my colleagues in Germany, um, the German constitution is one of the most respected and wonderful constitutions in the world. You have a marvelous, uh, the principle of proportionality, I believe, actually uh, derived from the, the German constitution. I'm open to correction, but, but I believe that's the case. And I think it's wonderful what, uh, what, uh, what, what is happening in Germany at the moment with these cases, especially with regards to masks, because this is a very serious issue when you boil it down and focus attention on children and employees and members of the public generally, but in particular the children, because I'm not a medical expert, I, I cannot speak to, to, the, to the medical uh, uh, the science aspect of, of things, 
But what I can do is I can speak to the, the fact that I've read scientific papers, I've listened to experts such as Professor Cahill, uh, uh, Professor Schwab, and Dr. Marguerite Gries Brisson, and so, so many others. That war and, and those experts are warning us of certain issues and concerns and perhaps potential dangers of wearing face masks. So, of course, I think this is something that needs to be addressed and addressed urgently. Not next week, not next month, today. This needs to be addressed because if our children are at risk, we have an obligation to ensure their protection. The media has an obligation to ensure their protection, to get this message out, to ensure that there are proper risk assessments carried out, to ensure that people are aware of the risks and or the benefits, to look at both sides, to, to determine this issue for once and for all, Very to good. ensure the safety of our children and the safety of em employees. I was formerly a, a, a director and a production manager in the most successful tubular steel furniture factory in Ireland. I was a production and quality control manager for over 20 years in that business before I became a, a lawyer. And I can tell you, if I w became aware of uh, certain uh, legal requirements for health and safety, and I knew that my employees were not, or people who, who I was responsible to manage, were not complying with those health and safety regulations, I would be very concerned mm -hmm. and uh, I would be taking immediate action because if those uh, uh, people do not comply with health and safety regulations, that is exposing me to risk and then that would have a, a knock-on effect on my insurance policy. So I think this is an issue that needs to be addressed urgently for the benefit of all. Firstly, for the safety of children. Secondly, for the safety of employees. Thirdly, for the safety of businesses that are, and, and, and school principals or school boards of management or college deans and institutions that could be at risk of liability from a tsunami, a potential tsunami of litigation Very if good. people are harmed as a result of these issues. So, there Thank you go. You That's just in a nutshell. I can speak a lot longer about that, but Thank you. I, I, I would like to hand over to my colleagues now. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank Hello, um, I'm Fiona Hine. Um, I am an events manager, manager and business development manager. Uh, well, formerly, uh, since I've mainly worked within the hospitality industry, so I've seen the absolute destruction of that industry since the day of lockdown, and it's, it won't recover unless we actually do something, resist what they're doing to us, and act now. So having seen that, read the coronavirus legislation, I felt very strongly about the restriction of our freedoms, about the mandated masks, about what might be mandated vaccines. Uh, again, the destruction of all independent businesses, basically. So I've found myself becoming more of an activist. Um, I've hosted political rallies um, in the UK, two of which um, had about 30,000 people, which was fantastic. So there are people out there that see what's going on. I've actually been arrested twice uh, for breaking coronavirus legislation. Um, first time was for breaking the rule on gathering in a group of more than two. Uh, the second occasion was for organising a rally on the 19th of September. It was completely peaceful, just bringing truth and freedom. So I've now, I'm delighted to be appointed as the General Secretary for the World Freedom Alliance. I've worked closely with Professor Dolores Carhill and Martin Byrne now for some time. So I'm delighted to be joined now with other professionals and people, like you say, fighting the fire for truth and freedom and for a better world. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Holger Fischer. Um, he joined us today because uh, today, um, for, for, for me personally, it's uh, the most important day because we worked on, on that day for four weeks or five weeks almost um, with um, three advisory boards, uh, a legal, a medical and health safety and environmental uh, advisory board. We put it together to um, uh, also to uh, look from different views on the topic, the mask issue, um, the, the legal advisory board and the medical advisory board. Um, they worked um, hours and hours, sometimes 18 to 20 hours a day um, just to bring up all information that is available worldwide concerning masks 
um, in professional use and um, as well in um, uh, use for children, but there's um, almost nothing available because children um, never had to wear a mask in the past. So these results will be um, um, presented a little bit later. Um, we focused on the health, safety and environmental uh, issues, uh, employee protection laws, which are um, valid worldwide. When I was in 99 in South Africa, we worked in a fiberglass plant and um, I did cr process costing over there. And so each and everybody was wearing a mask. My lung was harmed in, in that time. Um, and since then, um, I, I suffer in certain um, circumstances. So I'm, I'm quite aware of the risks of masks, the wearing the wrong mask and applying the mask in the wrong way. And this is what we address here. And um, uh, Mr. Um, Fisher, he joined us today as um, a firefighter. He didn't know that uh, what what, ha what happened today, but he took account and um, is here now. And maybe um, you can tell some some things about what you experienced the the last uh, yeah. days and weeks here in Germany, especially with our. Uh, German legislation. You can do it in English or in German. I will try my best. Um, I'm not a native speaker as you uh, hear and um, I'm a um, solicitor in Hanau, uh, a town near to Frankfurt, east of Frankfurt and um, I deal with all the cases around Corona and I'm one of the few in Germany who are not feared about, yeah. Um, I I'm not. I don't fear to 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 tell my opinion about Corona, and um, I'm a member of Anwälte für Aufklärung. It's a group of uh, solicitors who uh, want uh, to to fight against Corona, fight for people, and uh, more or less 100. But uh, each day, uh, someone. Uh, comes to this group and uh, wants to, to take part in this group. We have uh, many things to do and more or less for children, as you said before. Yeah. First, fighting for children. Second, maybe for employees. And uh, the first thing is fighting against masks yeah. and um, to prove and our main problem is that uh, recently we don't have the cases uh, where we, we can prove because it's always this, uh, this uh, uh, procedure, this, um, how do you say? It's, uh, it's an urgent procedure you have to deal with. And it's, it's an urgency. Urgency. Mm -hmm. So, yes. and, and we, we can't prove anything. And maybe, I, as I said, uh, as, as I say always, in, uh, maybe in 10 years we will know it better, but then it's too late. Yeah? And uh, we have to fight now. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, each generation of people has to fight for freedom, has to fight for democ democracy, and now it's my time to fight for. Yes. I didn't, I didn't uh, expect it, but now it's my time and it's my day to fight and this is yeah. what I do and um, yeah. yes yeah. I, <laughs> it's my constitution yeah? yeah yeah so I don't want to say more it's I, I think it's this uh, this uh, thing what I can do now and what I want to do tomorrow yeah, yeah. and yeah. maybe we will uh, See each other tomorrow again. Yeah. yeah? Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, if, if I could just add to what Mr. Fisher has said, and it's a pleasure to meet you, sir, and I really look forward to meeting you in person uh, tomorrow. But um, I could just add that there are two important uh, court cases, uh, court decisions that tie in with that idea of, of our freedom mm -hmm. and that relate also to the issue about masks and the potential uh, harms. Uh, uh, that could be inflicted on our children or our employees or members of the public generally. So there was a recent court decision in the United States mm -hmm. in, in the state of Pennsylvania. And I'll just give you a, a brief quote from that. It was Mr. Justice Stickman IV was the judge. And he said, quote, 
the greatest threats to our system of constitutional liberties may arise when the ends are laudable and the intent is good, especially in a time of emergency. In an emergency, even a vigilant public may let down its guard over its constitutional liberties, only to find that liberties, once relinquished, once given up, are hard to recoup or to get back. And he went on to say, but even in an emergency, the authority of the government is not unfettered, it's not unrestrained, it's limited in other words. The liberties protected by the Constitution are not fair-weathered freedoms in place when times are good, but able to be cast aside in times of trouble, like now. The Constitution cannot accept the concept of a, quote, new normal, where the basic liberties of people can be subordinated to open-ended emergency mitigation measures. And I heard a colleague of mine who's also a politician in Ireland, he's a very senior barrister, and he said in the Irish Parliament, just because there's an emergency, it doesn't mean that our constitutional rights or indeed our constitution can be thrown out the window. There's a very wise and extremely well-respected uh, Supreme Court judge in Ireland called Mr. Justice O'Donnell, and he said in a recent Supreme Court case, quote, it should be remembered that the essence of constitutional rights is that they call for enforcement precisely when inconvenient. Contrary to the wishes of government, the clamor of the media, the public mood more generally, and even the personal wishes of judges themselves. So Mr. Fisher has pointed out the fact that we're in an emergency, of course, and, and there's a great crisis that we're, that we're confronting with with people dying and, and, and case numbers rising and so on, and the government are telling us this, and the media are, are hyping up the case numbers on foot of these PCR tests and everything else. But there's also another emergency that I don't think people are talking about, and they should be talking about it, is that's the issue of safety for our school children and employees who, who are being forced to wear masks. So this is something, of course, that we need, that needs to be addressed now. Yeah, perfect. Martin, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Um, um, My pleasure. Yeah, now we, we hand over. Yeah, yeah you, you take also account and um, you came here. We can do it in German or in English, whatever. So I like. gave my best in English? Yeah, or? whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you never uh, met anybody before here, I think, in, in that row. Um, uh, but in the morning, um, Janko was calling you, um, uh, and then you were uh, confronted with many information that um, I think fell over you, and you're still here, you're still up. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, you're part of the team here today. Um, uh, maybe tell something about what you motivate uh, to, to take a responsibility, to take um, account uh, here in that corona situation, what, what motivates you? So I started in March, um, I don't can work, my sh uh, chief say go home, stay at home, and I want to do something. So I started with demonstration for information for the people. So in June I go to you know Querdenken. Yeah. You know it? So now I was Querdenken Miltenberg. And I was there um, many times in Berlin, many times yeah. in Miltenberg. So now today I will stay here. I want to help the people, the children, uh, the small children. So I will stay here today in the morning. And now I, I, today, uh, I stay here today in the evening. Very good. So I have nice people meet. Come. So yeah. we have much information yeah, to us. Come here. And so I hope yeah. I can help uh, the people and the children. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, my hope is uh, this corona is um, fast. Um, is that one? Um, over. Gone very oh, fast, fast over. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm sorry. Over <laughs> fast yeah. over. And maybe I should say, two months ago, I didn't know this uh, this lady, yeah. And now we are best friends. Yes. Oh, She's so an nice. activist. 
she uh, brings people together yeah? and she she does something yeah and uh, she develops new projects and one of her projects uh, is uh, co uh, collaborate with me <laughs> <laughs> this is a big and, one and so oh, now it's it's a great family it's and a family, yeah. Yeah. the good things uh, in, in in our times here is we create new families yeah yeah new organization of people and this is the good thing about Absolutely, just, uh, because about corona know, since since we all started and, and corona, i got to know I'm professor Knall and fiona and uh, and so many other people like dr heiko schoening and and uh, so Marika many Hedeberg. other people dr zach cox uh, we we've been in touch with with lawyers and scientists all over the world and uh, we, we're, I'm in regular communication with lawyers in, in Canada and we, we've recently been in communication with um, lawyers uh, in, in South America, in Chile, Uruguay, uh, España, um, so and African. even we've been in, in contact with uh, doctors and scientists in Russia yeah. just over the past weekend. So it's I'm wonderful sure. that, that professionals are coming together and that they're, they're, they're joining forces and collaborating and, and helping to stand up and to fight, for, essentially fight for freedom. Yeah. I, I, I never thought oh, I'd, sorry. I'd see sorry, the day when I would be, be saying that. It, it seems bizarre that we should have to even think that we yeah. have to fight for, for freedom, but it's, yeah. it's something that, that seems to be uh, affecting everyone and people are becoming more aware of that, that we need to, to speak up now. Can I just say, actually, it. sorry to interrupt, Martin, we actually did meet. We met in um, Berlin. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so just the to go back, time. so yeah. when, when, when you hosted a rally or Queer Denken, how do I say Denken? Denken. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The 10th of October. Relatively right. So when we went to, um, Heiko Shoney invited myself and uh, Dolores to um, Berlin, yeah. which is where, and Martin, sorry, which is where we happened to meet and you were running around organizing and I know what that feels like because I organized the, the 19th September. We had 25,000 right. people on my own. So we actually have met and I didn't know that we were connected. So it's amazing how people just seem to be finding each other. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. makes you motivated and you think, well, you ha it, it brings back your hope. And yes. that's, yeah. yeah. It's miraculous. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, yeah. It's a wonder. We, yeah. we really yeah. can say it's a wonder. As yeah. we sit here, um, I'm very proud that Margareta Yay. joined us because she's very, really <laughs> tired. She had tough days with me. Uh, be honest, no. there happened many you things. Are but, but, you um, are excellent. You are excellent. But uh, Margareta, yeah, um, yeah, we will hurry. Um, um, Margareta is the she's the one who uh, the one key person who motivated me to start all all, all that um, initiative here, Solid Facts, um, because she was in Berlin. Um, First of uh, August ten, or yeah, first ten, of August, what, what yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 10, 2020. Yeah. 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 Very significant day. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I miss the dates, but uh, you weren't allowed to fly back without mask. You were um, accused with certain things, and it was an emotional um, interview late in the night. I, I saw it live in the internet, um, and I, I thought um, there's many expertise worldwide and. M Myself, I also have some expertise, so um, we should stand up. And you promised, or in, in that video, you, you uh, were um, um, called to take action. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so <laughs> I thought, if if she takes action, I'll do it in parallel. And Excellent. I thought about Great. what 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 could what what could I do with my expertise, and. Um, this is why I'm here, and uh, I didn't know anybody here. Nobody, um, no contact. I, I'm not a politician. I'm always in the background, um, and um, I, I was trained psychologically for um, nuclear terrorism issues. Um, I have some special treatment, uh, um, uh, but um, I think for me it's really a wonder um, how all to get all things come together and especially now today um, if I reflect back the the, the weekend in, in Stockholm yes. um, we cried together we um, laughed together we uh, hugged we <laughs> hugged and um, it, it, it was we are under high pressure um, very high pressure um, the suppressions are pretty much high um, um, 
as a lawyer, uh, you get to know how family and uh, people get divided. Um, children were taken off uh, the family and um, in Berlin, uh, in, in, in my office, uh, you remember what um, Janko is here, all, also here. He should come, come over now for the internal stuff afterwards. Um, yeah. uh, these are the guys who, who, who take account, who, who um, take responsibility, and they fight each and every day, hours and hours, to help uh, uniting our, our um, civilization, our nation. And this is one of our major aspects here. We try to, to unify and, um, yeah. Uh, and just, yeah, it was almost uh, the, the final thing, but Margareta, maybe you tell something about uh, yourself. There is nothing left to say. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you said it about, all. About your profession, who you are, and. Um, yeah. um, uh, my name is Margareta Gris Brisson, I'm a neurologist. Uh, uh, what else is there to say? <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I followed uh, the entire development of the so-called pandemic literally from uh, hour zero and within the first or second week one could notice that there is something really not, not completely right that information was withheld, uh, information was presented distorted, and then uh, that's when you go and look for alternative information and alternative media. And uh, um, thanks God, uh, in, uh, since I'm a neurologist from Germany, I literally absolutely concentrate only uh, about my own country. I know the issues is, are worldwide, but uh, uh, I followed the development in Germany and I know for sure that at no point the German medical system was ever overwhelmed yeah. and this entire lockdown and all these meaningless uh, measures uh, were never ever at no point justified and they continue half a year later. Uh, with now really uh, tremendous, uh, literally side effects and, and adverse uh, reactions to every human being, children uh, grown uh, or uh, teenagers grown up, ill people, uh, well people, healthy people, I have to admit it does something to me. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does yeah, something to me. It's, I'm going myself through a roller coaster. One, one day, as you say, we hug and cry. Other uh, minutes we, we jump and, and are hopeful. And only because we are together and only because we strengthen and give strength to each other, yeah. we are able to go through it. And I really, really ask my colleagues, my, my or better rather than my colleagues themselves, our leadership, the medical leadership, Please, please, please. It is a medical issue, so it is our duty to solve it. Yeah. It is a medical issue. It is the Ärztekammer, probably Lawyers. in England, yeah. General Medical Council yeah. or whoever, the, the CDC, uh, Gesundheitsämter, the ethics committees. The ethics committees, where are they? Yeah. It's practically a, uh, uh, a, a clinical trial on the entire population what's, yeah. uh, what is happening. Absolutely. Because yeah. no one clarified what these masks actually do. And I do not want to hear, I say it over and over again, I do not want to hear about a study in reference to being able to breathe oxygen. This is basic physiology, and this is no clean, no matter of a clinical trial. Do you agree, Dolores? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, is, it, I, yeah. I cannot stand it. Where is the clinical trial if I'm allowed to breathe or not? Please jump off the helicopter because no clinical trial proved it so far that anything could happen to you. Yeah, but, but I think maybe just yeah, that's we are very good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe just, to, you know, the clear thing is that on the 11th of March 2020 it was 1% of the annual flu death, so we didn't need to declare a pandemic. For coronaviruses, there are prevention and treatments, vitamin D, C, zinc, and hydroxychloroquine and zinc. So therefore, there was no need for any lockdown. And then only if you declare it lockdown do you have these issues around uh, masks, social distancing, distancing yeah. quarantining, saying in Ireland we have now in uh, November 2020, 
that they're telling people they can only drive five kilometers and how many people they can have in their home. And this is happening all over the world. So there was, in March, there was no need for the lockdown. It was a similar death rate since January of the flu. There is prevention and treatment, so therefore no one need to get sick, no one need to go to hospital. So in the World Freedom Alliance, what we are doing is, you know, legally coordinating the proof that there was, it was clear from January, any kind of measures from government would cause more harm than good in public health and in policy making for government. If ministers or health ministers or individual, you know, science advisory boards or medical organizations bring in policies that are clear they either should have known uh, or they did know cause more harm than good you are straying into the area of harming the society yeah. which is around yeah. Yeah. malfeasance uh, potentially so that they have they can be held to account so i suppose what we're doing in the world freedom alliance is coordinating doctors scientists lawyers and policy makers and whistleblowers and also innovators to build a new future so to identify that this was a mistake from the beginning to provide evidence for this to in, to show how the policy should have been done and to help the governments stop the lockdown and also to learn lessons potentially by provide, providing uh, international court cases that reassert our freedoms of freedom of speech, freedom to travel, freedom to practice religion and bodily integrity. So it was gr my great pleasure uh, to be Dr. Heiko Schöning in Germany, uh, was elected Vice President of the World Freedom Alliance and uh, myself, Dolores Cahill from Ireland. It's a great honor to be President of the World Freedom Alliance uh, and to lead the fight back across the world against this lockdown. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and um, today, to wrap that up, it's, it's much longer um, than, than expected. We wanted to take uh, two minutes per testimony, but we have so much to say because um, uh, it's burnt in our hearts, I think, and we could uh, take hours and hours to tell what, what happened. Um, but I, I will announce um, that we will build the World um, HSI Engineering um, um, a council or alliance because um, there's also a civil um, action uh, that we need to do. Um, the harm that happened um, is sometimes uh, so hard that it, it must be um, trusted. Uh, so um, we set up that organization um, under the roof, if you yeah, would agree. Yeah, of course, agree. we'd be delighted. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, I will coordinate it. Um, um, somebody has to take account. Well done. Um, be because we are good as uh, if we act as a team. And exactly. uh, as I said, today we had a live stream with Bittle TV, thanks to Roger. Um, and um, we... Um, uh, Everybody is able to see that. Um, I don't want to repeat what we did there. Yeah. Um, uh, it was in the morning or in, in the early afternoon. Tomorrow we will do that on an international basis. Um, we welcome um, Martin. He will uh, join us because he is an urgent firefighter taking it, uh, into account. Um, and um, we will have um, even um, American. Uh, um, friends with us. Uh, it, it's getting more international than today because it's an international problem. And yeah. um, we have software, we have everything to, to, to do um, and uh, enforce the whole thing. So thank you everybody and um, now we have uh, uh, time off. Yeah. We, we yeah. will go, and, uh, go to bed. And, uh, <laughs> World thank Night, my partner. Yeah, we <laughs> 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 All done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is second. Okay. Bye -bye. <laughs>